All right, 1 John 3, we'll read the first couple of verses. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I tell you what, I can't wait for that day. Now, beloved, that's what we live for, ain't it? I mean, that's what gives us strength to go ahead. And if I had any kind of title this morning, it would simply be, We Shall Be Like Him. <laughs> Now you just think about that and let the Holy Spirit uh, encourage you a little bit about that this morning. But let's dig into these couple of verses here. Uh, it says, Behold. Now, that means simply to take a long look at. Uh, what about John when he's talking about when Jesus come? He said, Behold the Lamb of God. We kind of throw that word out there and don't think a whole lot about it. But it means to just... Take a moment. It's kind of like the Selah in the Old Testament in the book of Psalms. It's kind of like, let's take a look at this. Or what do you think about this? Or let's slow down and take into consideration what's coming behind this. Behold what manner of love. So take an in-depth look at this. What manner of love or what sort or quality of something. <laughs> The sort of quality of what something is, the manner of it, the depth of it, the insides of it. You know, I know some people who are just, they're very mechanically inclined, and they want to get inside something and just see what makes it work. It ain't good enough for them that you can put the thing in drive and go, okay? Why? <laughs> Why does it go when you put it in drive? I mean, they want to they wanna get the transmission, if you will, and just break it down from the flywheel on down, you know, and just see what all these inner parts that make it work. And that's kind of what it, John is doing here in saying what manner, the depth of the love. I kind of got to believe that this is one of those times when John was uh, maybe by himself and, and just God started just pouring his goodness into him. You ever been in those times when you, especially when you're going through a lot of fleshly things, you're battling things all the time and uh, cares of this world, so many things are going on, then you find yourself when you finally get along with God. I want to tell you, it, it gets tough. You, you just find, sometimes, you need to pull away, leave your wife and your husband or whatever at home, your kids, go get by yourself for a little while. I don't care if it's 30 minutes. Take a walk in the woods. Or if you love running, take a run. I mean, I don't know. Whatever, you love, whatever your thing is, but get along in those times with God. And i got to believe he was here, and he was talking about what manner of love. Now, if you understand the fact that the Spirit of God moved on these men. Now, you've been in those times when the Spirit of God has just moved on you and it's overwhelming. I mean, you can't, you just kind of like caught up in a, 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 I don't know how to even explain it, but you just kind of caught up in a, a way that it's just in awe when God's presence moves in. I love those times when it can be they can be hundreds of people in the room, and next thing you know, it's just you and God. <laughs> you can be working, and next thing you know, it's just you and God. There can be a lot of stuff going on around you, and it can just be you and God. I love how He speaks, and it gets in those times. What matter the depth? And of course, you and I know we could write a bunch of things down, and we could do all this, but can we explain the depth of the love of God. Absolutely not. There is no possible way. I was trying to look up that old song this morning in the hymnal and 
For whatever reason, I couldn't find it, but <clears throat> it's kind of that song that the, the man wrote on a wall in the insane asylum. And I don't even remember what it is now because I couldn't find it, but he talks about if the uh, sky was a quill and the ocean was an ink and the writer would drain the ocean dry trying to explain the love of God. I mean, that's just the love of God. There, It's amazing they found that pinned on a wall of a man who was supposed to be insane. Sound like God might have visited that man right there, right? I think God got a hold of that man. Maybe they think we're insane. The world does. I'm telling you, we're mocked this morning by getting up and leaving your house. Your neighbors look and say, go that idiot. Going down there, I'm going to sit here and watch uh, uh, Fox News this morning or whatever, you know, Sunday morning, all them programs, the way all that stuff's rigged to make you believe that kind of stuff anyway. Uh, they, it's, it's, all, it's all crooked, okay? <laughs> all them shows. They're going to put out whatever the president wants you to hear, and I'm getting away from that now. Let's move on. <laughs> We're going to get in the flesh this morning. We're talking about the love of God. My goodness, what an oxymoron. Uh, be going on that direction. But anyway, the depth, the manner of love, what it contains. And of course, in uh, the next chapter, in chapter 4, in verse number 10, John says, Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. So the word herein, here is the one who is the embodiment, the one who contains love. And that is God. And He is love. God is love. John talks about it a lot. I love the intimacy that John brings across in this passage, in this whole book right here. It's kind of different from his gospel, in a way. Of course, it kind of starts it out in the same way. But I love how he gets you drawn to the intimate relationship with Christ, and that's what he wants. We can wear the fleshly man out doing and doing and doing and doing, and our spiritual man on the inside is starving to death. And that's exactly what happens to us. We get so burnt out and so wide open. I can't tell you how many times I want to just throw my tools in the truck and say, you know what, I just want to get this spent out for God. Doing something that's going to matter. And then I get to thinking about my bills. <laughs> and I get to thinking about, well, I guess I am what God wants me because if he did, he would dry up the work. Okay, he's flooding it on, so I'm trying to do the best I can do. It's a balancing act, ain't it? Mm -hmm. For all of yes. us, no yeah. matter what we're in. Yeah. No matter if we're a homemaker, I'm here to tell you that's a job. Amen. There's responsibilities. Amen. There's so much that you find yourself doing, and you can get burnt out and spent out. But you know what? God pours his love into us. So herein is love. That If you'll notice, that is H-E-R-E-I-N. It's all one word. It's not two words. That means it is like a embodiment, if you will. Herein is love. Listen, hey, there it is. Brother Dunn, hook me up. I like this. I want to read it. Could we with ink the ocean fill, and were the skies of parchment made, where every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Nor could the scroll contain the whole though stretched from sky to sky. That is it, brother. Thank you. Think about that now. The de it absolutely, if you could explain it, and you know I can't, and I know you can't, there's no way we can touch the hem of the garment but just think about the ocean and all that is in there. It would absolutely drain it dry. What a song. What a revelation that that brother was given there. The love of God. So herein. In other words, if it's kind of like a container. Okay? A container is just going to contain. Okay? But what's inside the container is what matters. 
It doesn't matter if it's a coffee cup. That cup ain't nothing unless it contains something. It's what's on the inside. So herein is love. The one who contains love. We see God is the one who took the initiative. Look at this verse. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son. He took the initiative. He is the one that done the act of initiating something. The act of putting a plan into action. Not that we love God, but that He first loved us. And then He proved it. Then He took the first step. He took the initiative and sent His Son to be the propitiation and appeasing of the penalty of our sin and not His. So see, He had no sin. He took the initiative and said, I will come. That's initiating love. You know, uh, you can talk about how much you love somebody, but you know what? Love is spelled T-I-M-E. Time. <laughs> That's something we all have a struggle with balancing, <clears throat> is time. Would you not agree that just absolutely life is just a balancing act everything yeah. but you know what it's how we get that in uh, in order is how we either do what we say we're going to do and we can't always please everyone don't think you can i was going to go ahead and tell you i'm sorry if i have failed you and there'll be times i will i will not be able to meet everybody's expectations and neither will you there's no way it is impossible it's impossible to meet uh, one person's expectations most of the time. So you take a whole body, it's just not going to happen. But it's okay. You can only do what you can do. And God knows your heart. But 1 John 2, 2, He is the propitiation for our sins. Not for ours only, but for also for the sins of the whole world. So, what manner of love and that's that one that contains it. Now he says that hath bestowed, the Father has bestowed upon us. That means to give something to someone of one's own accord and for his advantage. To bestow a gift. To supply and furnish the necessary things. It's almost like the Father just lavished his love toward us and that's exactly what he did. It's just lavishing. When you think about the depth, the manner of this love that the Father has bestowed, it's just like, it's kind of like, uh, you see these Awana kids, if you ever been down there, and man, they get that big old bucket of candy. They'll take that candy and sling it out through there, and they'll take that candy and sling it, and sling it, and more of them kids, and they just like, coming out of a gate, boy, they sit there, they ready to go get it, and just wait. They all got their bags. They're waiting to go get it. Now, that's just something y'all see if you've never seen it. But boy, once they see, get the word go, they just like a bunch of ants on a sugar cube. I mean, they go. <laughs> they go into it. Well, that's the love of God. I'm telling you, He has bestowed it. He's lavished it upon us. I love the grammar in this. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And I, I like this now. Therefore. Oh, here's that word again. Now we're in the context of something, but we're fixing to get the other side of the coin. Okay? And that's exactly what it is. He said, Therefore the world knoweth us not. Therefore, by the means of this bestowing of great love, the world, the ungodly multitude, those alienated from God, those that are on another course other than we are, those that are hostile to Christ, they don't comprehend our motives. They don't comprehend our desires and what drives us. They don't understand when we appear weak, we're really strong. How many times has the, has the Father put you in a position where you're absolutely helpless, weak, dependent, completely, 
on the grace and the love of God, Amen. you're there, and the world's looking at you and saying, where's your God at now? And the whole time, when you finally get in the right state of mind, and you accept that, God, this is your will, and I want to glorify you through this, that when God brings you out, you're the one saying, He's been right here the whole time. He's been faithful. It don't make no sense to the world. When we appear weak, we're really strong. How we stand on our knees. Why we bow our knee now instead of later. Why we're motivated to honor and to worship our Lord and Savior. Why we give our time and our money for the kingdom of God. Why we're able to forgive. And why we're able to heal and to love. Why we want to just do what's right. The world don't understand that. Therefore, he said, the world knoweth us not. It comprehends us not. Because everything I just listed, of course, I couldn't touch the hem of the garment, but everything I just listed, there's a, it's just the opposite of the world. The world thinks you've got to cut somebody down to get ahead. And you'll get stoned on. Don't worry. You will get stoned on. You'll get taken advantage of. You'll get ridiculed. You'll get saying you're just a, a, a idiot. You're a bigot. There's all kind of stuff you can get thrown out there. It doesn't matter. They'll throw all kind of things at you. You just keep doing what's right. You just keep standing on the Word of God and let God deal with them. I, I, I cannot help but remember the words so many times praying with Brother Fred Jones before he went on to glory. Lord, this is your house. Lord, this is your work. Lord, this is your world. Now you just do with it what you have to be done. Oh, what wisdom. And Brother Fred, y'all that knew him, that's the way he lived. He'd say that he was done. He'd get up and go on. And, you know, we'll find ourselves sitting here uh, uh, kind of just begging and wailing and beating the floor and all prostate and stuff, which is good. Uh, but you know what? Sometimes when they just be that way, just turn it over. It's yours. I can't do nothing else about it. I can't do nothing else with it. I'm done. It's yours. And move on. And let God do His work, and He will. It might won't always be in your time, but He will do His work. So the world knoweth us not. Why? Because it understood it did not know who He was. Now, verse 2. Beloved, there's that word, I love it. That's just sweet. Dear one, my well-loved one. He said, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now is a present tense term. Now, beloved, my dear one, at this present time, we are, and that is a present tense term also, and you can say it like concretely. It's just, it's fixed. Beloved, now, there's no moving, there's no changing that. We are the sons of God. No matter what you're going through, you are a child of God. You're a son and you're a daughter of God. If your faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ and He's your Lord and Savior, you are complete in Him. You have everything that He has. Our problem is... He don't have all of us. Mm -hmm. See, that's what gets people get mixed up about the filling of the Spirit. You got these, some of these other denominations that, well, you got to speak in tongues to be, you know, filled with the Spirit. Listen, it ain't how much you got of God, it's how much God's got of you. That's where it's at. It's how much has He got of me. And I, I promise you, I can tell, and I know you can, I can tell when I haven't turned it all over. I can tell when I'm not Christ-like. I can tell when I entertain too many thoughts all the time. That's the Spirit of God's job, and that's what He does. But He loves us in a love that we just don't understand. But we are the sons of God. I like this. It does not yet appear. There's still a veil over us right now. There's still a glass that we look through darkly. You know, and you think about that reference, and you think about when they went in the Old Testament times. The only the 
high priest could go behind the veil. The Holy of Holies. Everybody else couldn't go. Now how would that make you feel? <laughs> well, that's just the way it was. On the other side <coughs> of the veil was the Holy of Holies. And of course, you know the story. If God killed them, they had to tie a rope to his ankle. Because if God killed them, they had to drag him out. They couldn't go back here where it was. Well, on the other side of the veil was completeness. It was holiness. They couldn't get there. In a, in, a, in a real sense, that's where we are now. Not on the context of that, because we know the veil has been rent from the top to the bottom. We have access through Jesus Christ to go into the Holy of Holies. We know that. But on the as we look now, it doesn't yet appear what we <coughs> shall be. But we are complete in Him. We have a glorified body. We just hadn't got it yet. <laughs> Praise God for that. I look forward to the day. I can lay this old shell down. Listen, the older we get, don't don't cheat me, Uncle Al. The older we get, the more we fall apart. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing after the other. It's a pill for this and a pill because you're taking that pill and a pill because you're taking that pill that's taking that pill. Listen, one of these days we're going to lay it all down. Amen. It don't appear. We're not finished. What's that old song? Don't judge me yet. There's an unfinished part. God's not through with us. God is not through with us. Uh, don't judge the book by the cover if you will. It doesn't yet appear. That's what he said. It's not there yet, although it is there. We are seated in heaven and places, although we're seated right here. It's concrete. It's there. We are the sons of God. It does not yet appear. So there is like a veil. We're looking through the smoke glass, if you will, when it says in First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians, that we are, uh, appear through a glass dimly. But then we're going to see face to face. It's all where it, what's on the other side. But he said it does not yet appear what we shall be. I like this. But we know that is assurance. We know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Now, I did not even attempt. I, I mean, I, I wrote all this down on one verse, basically. There's no way I even attempted to go on we shall be like him. <laughs> How can you pin that down? Wow. We're going to have a, a glorified body. We're not going to ever sin again. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine that? <clears throat> Let that sink in just a minute. We're actually going to be able to love as He is loved. Not just like He loved and like He does love. We're going to be able to love like He is. He is love. See, and that's what we fall short. I do. I, I can only speak for myself and can tell you that uh, the world will beat you down, beats me down, and it's kind of like everybody else. I get in the corner, I'm coming out. And that's what we fail. I fail. I do that. But one day, see, it don't appear yet <laughs> what we shall be. Okay, there is a something else on the other side. We shall be like him. And that's his fullness. And I know that he, John's looking ahead and seeing his completeness there. How does John know that? Well, John's seen him. John's seen him pop into the room. John's seen him alive after many infallible proofs. John's seen the wounds. John's seen the resurrected body. Man, John even seen Moses and Elijah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a what a time that's going to be when we get to see all this. I think John still said, "Look, if he could, and he's writing it to us, and the Holy Ghost is writing it to us, saying, y 'Y'all hold on. It doesn't yet appear what we shall be. When we see Him, when He's appeared, we're going to be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. That's talking about His fullness." You see, later on, John writes that no man has seen God at any time. Uh, we'll see. 
Where's that at? It's do, 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 do. Anyway, it's, it's right there. The first time. No man has looked on, been able to look on the fullness of God and live. And you can't. You can't look on the fullness of God yet, but we'll see Him as He is. That's what I'm looking forward to. What a, what a great two verses God has had for us this morning.